Welcome to another deep dive, and this time we're taking a look at Google's AI test kitchen. Ooh, very cool. So this is like, you know, getting the sneak peek at all the AI stuff Google's cooking up, but before it's like ready for prime time, you know. I like that, like getting to try the dishes before they're on the menu. Exactly. And we've got a bunch of sources for this one. Google themselves has put out some explanations of what they're doing. Plus, we've got articles from uh, Wired, TechCrunch, mm -hmm. The Verge, you know, the usual suspects. I think like we've got a full plate. We do. And the, the coolest part is a lot of this stuff you can actually try yourself. Oh, really? Yeah. Like there's this thing where you can create music using just text prompts and yeah. then another where you can like have these AI powered conversations. Whoa, hold up. AI composing music based on what I tell it to. Yeah, crazy, right? That's wild. Sign me up. And we'll also be diving into how Google is trying to do all of this responsibly, you know, making sure the AI is safe and unbiased. Yeah, because that's the big question with all this AI stuff, right? It's powerful, but we got to make sure it's used for good. For sure. Okay, so let's start with the basics. What exactly is this AI test kitchen? So it's basically this platform where anyone can like sign up and test out all these different AI experiments Google's working on. It's kind of like a beta program then. Yeah, exactly. It's a way for them to get feedback from real people and see how their AI works in the uh, in the real world. Smart move, right. Yeah. I mean, AI needs tons of data to learn, and who better to provide that data than us, the people who are actually going to be using it? Totally. And the cool thing is, it's not like a static thing. The AI test kitchen is constantly evolving. You know, new demos pop up, old ones get updated. Ah, so it's always fresh. Super fresh. Keeps things interesting, for sure. I like it. And you can access it all through a website or through their apps for Android and iOS. So pretty much anyone with a smartphone or computer can jump in and be a part of, you know, shaping the future of AI, essentially. That's really cool. And speaking of accessibility, this isn't just for folks in the US, right? Nope, not at all. The Test Kitchen is available in a ton of countries. We'll put the full list in the show notes, but we're talking global here. Wow, very impressive. And it supports multiple languages too, so it's not just English-centric, like Arabic, Chinese, Spanish, Russian, you name it. Very inclusive. Although they do recommend using English for the best results, right? Yeah. For now, at least. It seems like English is what the AI has been trained on the most, so it understands those prompts the best for now. Makes sense. Okay, so enough about logistics. Let's talk about the actual AI tools we get to play with. This music generation thing, Music LM. Mm. I'm super curious about that. Yeah, Music LMs, uh, it's pretty mind-blowing. Imagine this. You type in a description like, create a jazzy tune for a rainy day. And boom, Music LM actually composes a piece based on that. No way it can really understand those kinds of descriptions and turn them into music. It can. It's like having an AI composer in your pocket. And you can get pretty specific with it, like what instruments you want it to use or what kind of mood you're going for. Okay, that's seriously impressive. But is it like piecing together bits of existing music? Or is it actually creating something totally new? Creating something new from scratch. Whoa, okay, my mind is officially blown. Right, and it even gets cooler. It generates two different versions of the song, and then you get to pick which one you like better. Oh, wow, so it's like learning as it goes, seeing which versions people prefer. Exactly, it's like, hey, do I do a good job? Which one did I nail better? It's constantly learning and improving. That's a really clever way to get feedback and make the AI better. This is like beyond my wildest dreams. But music aside, there's also this whole conversational AI thing going on, right? With LAMDA. Ah, yes, LAMDA. It stands for like language model for dialogue applications or something like that. But the point is, it's all about making AI that can hold a natural conversation. Okay, so like you can actually chat with it. You can. And it's not just basic chit chat. They've trained this thing on a ridiculous amount of text data. We're talking like more than the entire English Wikipedia. So it's got a lot to say, I guess. It does. And that means it can like understand and respond to a huge range of topics. In the AI test kitchen, they have three different demos set up to show off what LAMDA can do. Okay, lay it on me. What are the demos? So one is called Imagine It. You basically name a place, it can be real or imaginary, and LAMDA will just riff on that, you know, creating scenarios and descriptions. Oh, that sounds fun. Like I could say underwater city, and it would just like build a whole world around that. Pretty much. It's like having a brainstorming partner who's always coming up with crazy ideas. Then there's List It, which is a bit more practical. You give it a goal, like planning a trip to Mars or something, and it helps you break it down into smaller steps. So it's like an AI life coach helping you achieve your dreams, even if those dreams involve interplanetary travel. Exactly. And the third demo is called 
talk about it. Dogs edition. Dogs edition. Yeah, so it's basically just a conversation about dogs. You can ask it questions, tell it stories about your dog, whatever you want, but the focus stays on dogs. I mean, I love dogs, but why just dogs? Well, it's a way for Google to test how well Lamb DA can stay on topic, you know? Ah, uh, so they're making sure it doesn't like go off on random tangents. Exactly. They're trying to see if it can resist the urge to chase squirrels and actually focus on the conversation at hand. Smart move. So we've got music composition, brainstorming buddies, AI travel agents, and dog-loving chatbots. Just another day in the AI test kitchen. But seriously, though, all these tools, they have some pretty amazing potential, right? I mean, where could this all be headed? How could AI like this actually change the way we live, work, and create? Ooh, that's the big question. And you know what? That's exactly what we'll be diving into next. Buckle up because the possibilities are pretty mind-blowing. Okay, I'm ready for it. Hit me with your predictions. All right, so imagine a world where, all right, so imagine a world where you've got like an AI partner for all your creative projects. Ooh, I like where this is going. Right, like imagine you're a, I don't know, a filmmaker. And you've got this AI that not only understands your vision, but can actually like contribute ideas and help you bring it to life. Whoa, that would be incredible. Like having a co-writer who never gets tired or needs coffee. Exactly. Or how about this? You're planning a trip and your AI assistant not only books your flights and hotels, but also curates a personalized itinerary based on like your interests, your budget, everything. That's like taking travel planning to a whole new level. <laughs> no more endless scrolling through TripAdvisor. No more scrolling, just boom, your perfect trip planned by AI. Okay, I am sold. <laughs> Sign me up for the future. But let's, uh, let's back up a little. Before we get too carried away with all the amazing possibilities, let's dive a little deeper into these specific demos, shall we? I'm really curious to hear more about how they work and what they reveal about the future of AI interaction. Sounds good to me. Let's unpack these demos and see what hidden gems we can uncover. All right, so Music LM, how does it actually work? Like on a technical level, is it just stitching together bits and pieces of existing music or is it really composing something entirely new? It's actually creating new music from scratch, which is, I mean, it's pretty mind blowing when you think about it. It really is, so how does it do that? So under the hood, Music LM is built on this thing called a transformer. A transformer, like the robots in disguise. Not quite, <laughs> though that would be pretty cool. No, in this case, a transformer is a type of neural network architecture that's been like super successful in natural language processing. So basically they trained Music LM on a massive data set of music, teaching it to understand all the patterns and structures of different musical styles. So it was like Music LM learned the language of music, just like we learned to speak and write. That's a great analogy. Just as we use language to describe scenes or tell stories, you can use text prompts to guide MusicLM's compositions. It analyzes those prompts, breaks them down, and then uses its knowledge of music to generate a piece that matches your description. Okay, so to put it simply, I could literally type in something like, create a soothing classical piece with a hint of melancholy for a rainy evening. And MusicLM would actually compose that for me. Exactly. And it's not just about the melody. It can generate different rhythms, harmonies. You can even specify instruments you want to hear, like, a solo piano piece or a full orchestral arrangement. It's like having a like a personal AI DJ yeah. who creates custom tracks based on your every whim. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Lamb DA and those conversational AI demos. I'm really intrigued by Imagine It. Can you really take the conversation in any direction you want, or are there limitations? You can definitely steer the conversation, but you gotta remember Lamb DA is still like under construction. You know? Right, so it's still learning the rope. Exactly. It's not going to understand every single nuance or, you know, have a witty comeback for everything you say. It's not a human after all. So no deep philosophical debates with Lamb DA anytime soon? Probably not. But you can have some really engaging and imaginative exchanges. Think of it more like, uh, like brainstorming with a friend who's super creative and always up for anything. I like that. It's like bouncing ideas off an AI buddy. Exactly. And who knows, maybe those AI buddies will be debating philosophy with us someday. But for now, it's all about exploring the possibilities of what AI can do. Right. Okay. And what about Listit? Is that one all about practical applications? Listit is all about getting things done. Like, let's say you tell it, I want to learn how to play the guitar. LambDA might break that down into a series of steps, like finding a teacher, getting a guitar, practicing regularly. It's like having an AI life coach helping you tackle those goals step by step. I could definitely use an AI life coach. My to-do list is out of control. Okay, and then there's 
Talk about it, dogs edition. Yeah. Which seems very specific. Why solely focus on dogs? Well, one of the biggest challenges with conversational AI is keeping it focused, you know? Yeah. Making sure it doesn't just go off on random tangents. Right, like preventing it from chasing squirrels, metaphorically speaking. Exactly. So by limiting the conversation to dogs, Google can really hone in on Lambda's ability to stay on topic and maintain coherence. It's like a test of its conversational discipline. Interesting. So it's not really about the dogs themselves. It's more about seeing how well Lambda can handle a focused conversation. Mm. Okay, I get it. So we've explored these cool demos, music composition, brainstorming buddies, AI travel agents, and dog-loving chatbots. But what does all of this mean for the future? How might AI like this actually change the way we live, work, and create? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And while it's impossible to predict the future with 100% certainty, we can definitely explore some potential scenarios. Think about how Music LM could change how we experience music. Imagine a world where you can create personalized soundtracks for your everyday life, perfectly tailored to your mood and activities. That would be amazing. I'd never have a bad song on my playlist again. But what about LambDA and those conversational capabilities? How could that impact us? Imagine having AI assistants that can not only help with like tasks and scheduling, but also with creative problem solving, exploring new ideas. Imagine a world where AI can help us break down complex information, synthesize different perspectives, and even generate new insights that we might never have considered on our own. Wow, that sounds like AI could actually become like a partner in our creative and intellectual endeavors. Exactly. And the AI test kitchen is giving us a glimpse of how those partnerships might work. This all sounds incredible, but it also makes me think, how do we make sure all this amazing AI potential is used responsibly? How do we prevent misuse or unintended consequences? That is the crucial question. It's not just about like pushing the technological boundaries. It's about making sure those advancements are actually aligned with human values and don't cause harm. And luckily, it seems like Google's taking this responsibility pretty seriously. Yeah, they definitely seem to be approaching this thoughtfully. So what are they doing to make sure the AI is used for good? Well, one of the key things they're doing is focusing on how the data from the AI test kitchen is used to improve their models. And it's a fascinating process that involves a lot of human oversight and careful analysis. Oh, that's right. We talked about the data collection earlier, but we didn't really get into how that data is actually used to make the AI better. Tell me more. Okay, so buckle up, because this is where things get really interesting. It's not just a matter of, like, throwing more data at the AI and hoping it magically improves, there's a really important human element involved in all of this. So Google's got these teams of reviewers and their job is to like analyze the data from the AI test kitchen. You know, they're looking for patterns, potential issues, making sure everything's running smoothly. Wait, hold on. So you're saying there are actual people reading through all those AI generated conversations about dogs? Not necessarily reading every single word. You know, it's more like they're sampling the data to get a sense of how the AI is performing. Mm. Are there any trends? Are there any red flags popping up? Ah, okay. So it's like quality control for AI. They're making sure it's behaving as expected and producing the results they want. Exactly. But it's not just about catching errors. These reviewers also provide feedback on how the AI could be improved. For example, they might notice that LambDA tends to misinterpret certain types of prompts, or that Music LM consistently struggles with a particular genre of music. So they're basically acting as AI coaches, helping them get better at what they do. You could say that, and that feedback gets sent back to the development teams who can then use it to refine the AI models. This is so cool. So it's like a constant back and forth between humans and AI, each one learning from the other and pushing each other to get better. That's the beauty of it. It's a collaborative process, a continuous feedback loop that's driving AI development forward. Okay, but I'm curious, how do they actually use that feedback to make changes to the AI? It's not like they can just sit down and have a heart to heart with the algorithm, right? Well, not exactly, but it's kind of like teaching someone a new skill. You know, you offer guidance, encouragement, and correction along the way. With AI, they use this technique called machine learning. And what that does, it allows them to adjust the model's parameters based on the data and feedback it receives. So in a way, they're kind of having a conversation with the AI. It's just a conversation that happens through code and data. That's a great way to think about it. And the more data they have, the more feedback they get, the better the AI becomes. It's all about learning and adapting. This makes me think back to our discussion about AI bias. You know, how do they make sure all this data and feedback isn't leading the AI down a path of 
harmful stereotypes or discriminatory behavior. That's where those human reviewers play a super important role. They're trained to look for any signs of bias in the AI's outputs. You know, like if Lambda consistently associates certain professions with specific genders, or if music LM generates music that relies on tired cultural cliches. So they're like ethical watchdogs making sure the AI stays on the right track. Exactly. They're helping steer the development of these powerful technologies in a way that aligns with our values and helps create a more equitable and just future. It's really reassuring to know that there are people in the loop, you know, thinking critically about these issues and making sure AI is used responsibly. It's a reminder that AI development isn't just about technological progress, it's about human progress too. Well said. This deep dive has been incredible. We've gone from exploring these mind-blowing AI tools to really getting into the nitty gritty of how they work and how they're being developed. It's given me a whole new appreciation for the complexity of AI and the importance of human oversight in ensuring it's used for good. I'm glad to hear that. It's a rapidly evolving field and it's crucial to have these conversations to make sure we're all on the same page about the potential benefits and the potential risks. Absolutely. So for everyone listening out there, here's a question to ponder. What role do you think humans should play in shaping the future of AI? Do we take a hands-on approach, guiding its development every step of the way? Or do we step back and let AI chart its own course? It's a question with no easy answers, but it's a question we all need to be thinking about. Because the choices we make today will have a huge impact on the world we create tomorrow. That's it for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.